Welcome back to Walkin' DIY. This is the second video for the Taddy Brothers 360 camera system. In this video, we're going to explain how to calibrate your camera system and the steps and methods we took to make this as easy as possible. The first thing that I wanna tell you is don't be overwhelmed with the booklet and the instructions. When you first look at it, you're gonna notice that everything is in metric. It's not a huge deal breaker, but I would recommend that you either pick up a metric tape measure on Amazon, or you take the time like we did beforehand and do the conversions out. It'll make your life a lot easier. The very first part of this whole process is to figure out what size vehicle you have. The best way to do that is to look at the booklet and you'll see here we're on camera calibration for buses S, S meaning small. And how we figured this out was we took two meters plus four meters plus two meters. That equals eight meters, which is roughly 13 feet and about one and a half inches. We go to the next page, our specific bus was a medium sized bus. So we took 13 meters, four, plus four, plus five. Again, only go from the back tape to the front tape. And we came up to 13 meters or roughly 42 feet, seven inches and 13 sixteenths. The last example is for large buses. Again, five plus five plus five is 15 meters, which equals 49 feet, two inches and just over half. So two and a half inches. You can do the same method for the trucks and the other vehicles that you can apply this camera system to. But just remember to follow the front to the back tape line. Your front tape placement here sets your sides, how far away they are from, from the bus or the truck or whatever it is that you have. The side placements dictate how far away your rear and your front tape line are. So on our bus, we have a seam that is dead middle on our bumpers, front and rear. Three meters is nine feet, 10 and seven over 64 inches. That's inside line to inside line. What we did was we put a square right on the seam of our bumper. We made sure that was level. And then we measured out the nine feet, 10 and seven over 64 inches divided by two in each direction. Then we put a piece of automotive tape with a black line showing where this tape line would line up to. We did that for the front and for the rear so we would be able to set these long strips on each side. Just like we found the middle point for the front and rear of our bus, we had to find the middle point for the centers also, and you will too. We had predetermined the middles for when we placed the cameras. So following the same principle, we measured up from the middle point, forward and back on each side. This is what set the distance for the front and for the back for us. Again, we placed dummy tape, which is just automotive tape, in the general position and then marked it with a black pen so we would make a perfect line of where the front calibration tape placement goes and for the rear. This was the hardest part of this whole process. After we set this up, it was as simple as sticking the tape down. We figured out it would be easiest to place the two long sides down first. And remember, we have the fake tape on each corner so we can get a nice straight line. All that we had to do was make sure that the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh uh, crosshairs was in line with our front tape placement and the dummy tape that went across. That way, when we did do the front tape placement, everything would line up. At that point, it was easy as running it all out on each side, making sure that the tape was straight. We did that by having one person up here holding, the other person pulled tight, but not too tight, and stretched it all the way back. I do wanna take a little special note here 
you're going to need to add up all of these different numbers here to see how much room you're going to need. In our case, even though our bus is 40 feet, we really needed about 65 to 70 feet in order to do this nicely. Kate here, just want to give a big thanks to the Taddy Brothers for sponsoring our bus build with this awesome 360 degree camera system. It's an absolute game changer, giving us a full surround view for just $12.49.99. You can even upgrade to the enhanced night vision and HDMI for an extra $300. And don't forget to use our promo code JK15 at checkout to save 15% off your purchase. Thanks again to the Taddy Brothers for making this project even better. You're almost ready to go into your vehicle and start the calibrating process on the screen. But first, I need you to look at the boxes that I have placed here and match what I've done. You'll see the cardboard box on the bottom, the camera box placed on its side, and the screen box placed next. This will equal roughly 90 centimeters. And that is important. If it makes your life any bit easier, put a piece of tape on this one corner that all lines up because that's the corner that needs to hit these red dots. Once you turn on your key, you'll be greeted with a blue screen inside as the cameras get all of the signals. To calibrate your system, you'll go to your menu and simply press camera calibration. At that point, you'll pick your front camera and you'll start the calibration process. Quick little side note here, if your camera doesn't look straight, you can move it about. I did preset all of my cameras according to the book at 45 degrees. I did that by using a speed square and just eyeballing it. But clearly I didn't have the front just right. So here you can see my dad straightening it out. Now we're ready to calibrate. So we decided to start with the front camera. You will notice on the screen the front camera calibration diagram. This shows how the system wants your crosshairs to look when viewing in real time. This all points out different locations where you will need to move your cursor from 1 through 8. It's a very intuitive system. Once you click next, you will see the real time view and the number 1 crosshair is flashing. You will need to use the up, down, left, right arrows on your remote to move the crosshairs to where it needs to go. As you can see, the quality of this 360 camera system is very clear and it is relatively easy to see where you need to move your cursor. It's as simple as connecting the dots. I will say the only thing that's a little bit funny is the boxes. It's really beneficial to have a second person put their finger on the top corner or get something bright or colorful so you can see it super clearly. It did tend to fade into my parking lot a little bit. You can see here my dad lifting his finger up and down so that as I'm inside, I can see that top corner. And with a couple clicks, we got that crosshair perfect. Now we're gonna repeat the process for all of the other crosshairs. As you can see, the left and right side is not much different from the front, just that the crosshairs are longer and more spread out. The next step after calibrating all four cameras is to go back to the image tuning section and select merging computation. This will take a few minutes. Once this is complete, you will get a full bird's eye view of your rig. Afterwards, you can make any adjustments in the camera calibration parameter settings. You can adjust the vehicle position to the front and rear shadow areas, 
and we will go into more detail about this in our next video to go over all of the awesome features. But for now, the system is ready for us to take on the open road. Well, maybe we have a few more things to finish up first. Thank you.